I, I, I heard cases of a young man who committed suicide in Abu. You know why? Because his result came out. They posted it. He now saw that he had some carryovers. He now went and climbed that engineering rooftop eh? and jumped down and died. What killed you? Paper. It's men that give that paper. And the person who died will arrive in a throne and they will say, where is the talent we gave you? That's the first time he will now realize that apart from certificates, there is something they gave him that he hid under the dust of the earth. Do you know what they call such a person? Wicked and unfaithful servants. You didn't use what we gave you. You didn't allow you to bless the world. You hid it and now you came back in a, in a, in a disgruntled manner and you are even very sad when you came. Uh, you, you don't understand the life so you ended it. If you are here, you are contemplating suicide. <laughs> you, are, you are not serious. <laughs> you are not serious. I've told you time and time again. One of the first lectures you receive in the wilderness is Suicide 101. I, 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 I stood before the three. The only thing that stopped me that evening, I, I joined it. I went straight in behind the Amphodio Hostel, Abu Zaria. I walked into that endless pan of forest. I was just walking into it like that until I came under one tree in the evening. The only thing was I knew that if I do anything and I now survive, I will be deformed for the rest of my life. Meaningless. I know why people take their life. Because that spirit has whispered to me too. The spirit will start convincing you first that nobody loves you. That your life is without value and that you need to teach these people a lesson. And the only way is to take your life so that they will wish they paid attention to you why they will wish that they didn't ignore you all these days? Ah, you will now imagine all the people you call that miss your call. That the day they hear that you ended your life, that the pain will be in their heart for long. One month, nobody call you and say, "How are you doing? Have you eaten?" In my front, my friends in the hostel, people are bringing cooler for them. Strange coolers. Just bring it and keep. And the guy will just say, Kai, this girl can cook a veg. You know what it means for a teenager? A teenager that has entered that age of self-consciousness to have one trouser and two shirts. You know what that means? His automatic inferiority complex. Inferiority complex pro max. You would you will try to be pretending like you are confident, but everything around you continues to prove to you that you are, you, you are not equal. Oh, and those days, I hated church. I hated church because it's another time to remind me that I didn't have anything to wear. One day, somebody was trying to describe me. He said, that brother with brown velvet, brown velvet. If you have suffered something in this life, one of the things you have to overcome later in your life again is an ungodly desire to over have that thing. You understand? I call it the scarcity effect. Something that you didn't have growing up. The day God blesses you, you will find yourself just buying the thing and, and you don't need it again. But there is one, there's one version of you that cried some years back. Some of you Today you buy clothes, you, you have not worn some of the clothes for close to five months. You keep buying. You know what you are going through? Scarcity effect. Some of you, you go and sit down and say, Madam, bring four meat and two pan de yam and, and, and vegetable soup and okra soup. Only you. You know what you are doing? Once upon a time, hunger dealt with you. Now, money has come. You want to show food that you are not... Somebody will carry 12 egg, one person, fry it. Fight, just fry it and, and sit down, eat and do his stomach like this. And I'm looking, you know what is happening? Once upon a time, you didn't have anything. Hey, you went to be peeping. Those, the little ones among us will not know this story. You were peeping through the window of your neighbor to watch their black and white TV. Then they now come and close the curtain that you were even peeping through. Ah, scarcity. 
mark, mark my words, the kind of TV you will buy in this life, you, you will not know why you bought that size of TV. There is something that is crying inside. And saying, don't, if it's TV in this life, you are strolling quietly, minding your business, and a car comes from nowhere and splash you water. Somebody say, ah, Lord, you saw it. <laughs> you will find that inside you is a hunger. Ah, how many scarcity effects are we going through? Growing up, nobody likes you. You are not attractive. Everybody just looks down on you. You know there are people that didn't look attractive when they were little. And then as they get older, they now found their tone. Amen. Amen. Suddenly somebody is now telling you, what is your name, brother? My God, you can't rest again. You're asking Choma out, asking Inkechi out, everybody. It's scarcity effect. You are not used, you are not used to being liked. It is this journey Jesus had to take me through to begin to read my heart of all the things that denatured me. They will buy bread in the house those years. Put the bread in the fridge. The bread, they bought it on Friday night. Against, and you don't, you don't eat bread only until Saturday morning. You know now you can just eat bread and tea anytime you like. You don't dream of bread and tea until special Saturday mornings. And that is when my dad travels and he comes back with the bread. Then they put it in the fridge. Guess what? I will not sleep throughout that night. I will be on the bed like this, restless, thinking, when will this morning do now? So I will get up, I will go and open the, the fridge, look at the bread, look at it, look at it. It was this day the devil gave me a strange inspiration. He told me to lose the bread. That, that just lose it first. You, don't, you will not do anything, just lose it. <laughs> you are good and your mercy is forever. Amen. Brother, don't take your life. Calm down. Everything will work out soon. Everything will come together. Sister, can you hear me? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I know that it is hard, but don't give up. In, inside my heart is many pages of pain. Many pages of betrayal. Many pages of shame. It was this, your middle street here, this middle street, this one you see here. I was schooling in Angwame Chibi Primary School. Two holes in my short nika. The back, two holes. Can you ever relate that person with the apostle you are calling today? No. It's Achacha bag. That's the name of the bag. Achacha. Buhu. So I will put it on my head. I'll put the rope here like this so that the back will slide on my back and cover those two holes behind. And I walk down these streets. Only the Holy Ghost knows that as the time passes, I will lift your horn. Don't give up. Don't give up. Listen, people already don't believe in you. So don't add, don't go and join them too and not believe in yourself. There are already many people who hope you will fail. Don't add to that number. Even if you are the last person to believe in yourself, stand. There are people here, your one most diligent quest to succeed is because you want to prove a point. You have been so insulted, so embarrassed from family. They have written you off. You are the rejected stone, the black sheep. They don't think anything good can come from you. And Satan is maximizing that potential. He wants you now to live your whole life trying to prove a point. Sister, don't mind anybody. It's amazing the kind of important decision we make trying to impress or prove a point to people who will not be in your life in the, in the next five years. In the next five years, you will look around, you will not see them. Yet, you have taken a very important decision just because you wanted to prove a point to them. See, there is nothing I tell you this night that my life has not proved. 
there is treasure in earthen vessels. Some of you from the pain, from the rejection, from the inferiority complex, you became an introvert. You were not hanging out with anybody. Only you were always quiet on your own. Then the Holy Ghost will begin to drop inspirations on your heart. You will begin to pour your heart upon books and write as you are writing. What the Holy Ghost is doing, tomorrow you will sit down one place and your books will fly to nations. You will not believe how quick life can change. The same you who was victimized, the same you who was downtrodden, the same you who was so inferior in your you know, belief of yourself. Suddenly you find out it doesn't take much to be confident. <laughs> when people see me sometimes teaching, they don't, know, they don't know what Jesus has done. Me, stand in public. A spirit convinced me when I was younger that I don't have anything good to offer. That there's nothing. So if people are gisting, my role is to be quiet and be listening. And if I want to talk, the spirit will make me stammer. So when I'm stammering, 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 I'll now respect myself and be quiet. How many of you know I'm a stammerer here? Eh? Any of those who are close, you must have heard. Any day I'm not clothed in the anointing, you will see my frailty. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep holding on. You are almost there already. And then there are those of us, you know, seated here. These things I'm saying, you won't need it now. You will need it tomorrow. You will come to a junction where things that you've trusted in will fail before your eyes. The only thing you will continue to hope on to, the God that has brought me this far. The God that has brought me this far. There were nights in ABU that were sorrows for me. I would wake up by 2 a.m. and go and cry. I, there is a mango tree inside the Amphodio Hostel. Huh? Old block. Lugara, you will know those places. I will go and stand under that mango tree. No prayer point. Only tears. Only tears. I didn't know. I felt so lost. So lost. I didn't know my place in life. It's like many of you now. You pretend as though you have it figured out, but you don't know what next. You don't know. Sometimes you need to just go to your father and cry. Cry well. You know there's a way you cry and you'll be belly food from the cry. Then you by yourself will clean the tears and come back and join people quietly. And God has counted your tears. He held it in his bottle. Am I going to be married? Calm down. Will I get a job? Calm down. The way time is going like this, this admission, calm down. Continue to press. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little, tear a little. We are making progress. Continue to press. If God wants to break me today, all he needs to do is to draw my heart just a few years back. And, and I will not be able to hold the tears from coming out. Because I know, I know it's a finger that has helped me. And it's the same thing God has for everybody here. Brother, sometimes you don't know what to say. Because you cannot pretend to your father. So when you go before him, you will not, you will not be pretending the way you pretend to other people. When you go before him, your only language is tears. Because you don't know what to tell him. You don't know where to start from. You just stay there and cry. Those tears has been my prayer point for several years. I will just be there and cry. Sometimes after crying, you will feel the touch of the Holy Ghost. He will touch your shoulder. Say, calm down, calm down. Is that calm down that will dry the tears? As you say, calm down. Then the tears will dry. You will get up like somebody that they consoled. And you will still be doing like this. <laughs> He'll say, don't worry, don't worry, you'll be fine. You know what the, the devil will do immediately that he will come and spoil another thing in your life quickly. <laughs> Though my beginning be small, weeping may endure for the night. Joy comes in the morning. Your life did not end like this. There's another chapter. You, you are just reading only one chapter. 
they will soon change the page. Then you will realize. Have you watched movies that they, they showed like the actor died? Then he became sad. And then they now showed you part two. And the part two, they now went to create another narrative to explain that actually he did not die. <laughs> Amen. That is how this chapter of your life looks like. You will think that this is it. It doesn't take God anything. You, you will now understand why you went through everything you went through. You are good and your mercy ever You are good and your mercy is forever.